What's up everybody, we're back with another video. For this session, we're playing at a new location. Well, not new to the strip by any means, but new to us. We headed a little farther north down the strip from where we were last night at Caesars Palace. And my first impressions of this poker room was I was really impressed, just the sheer size of it all. I mean, one of the bigger poker rooms definitely here in Las Vegas. A lot of tables and hopefully a lot of action. So let's take our seat and get started. We hop into the 3-5 game, which is a $1,200 max, so that's what we sit down with. And the first hand we get involved in, we have 7-deuce offsuit in the small blind. Folds around to the hijack, he limps for 5. On to me, we already have more than half invested, so we call $2 more, and the big blind checks his option. So, three ways to the flop, out of position. And it comes pretty good for the worst starting hand in poker. It's queen seven deuce rainbow. I check in flow, the big blind checks as well, and the hijack throws out a bet, $20. The driest of all dry flops. So we can make a case for raising or smooth calling. And we just got to this table, so we take the lower variance route and just smooth call. The big blind gets out of the way, so it's heads up to a turn. And the turn is ace of spades. Brings in the backdoor flush draw, but still, a pretty good card, because if the hijack was throwing out a feeler bet on the flop with ace-jack, ace-ten, ace-rag suited, he now improved to top pair. And not really worried about ace-queen, because ace-queen in the hijack should have been a raise pre-flop a high percentage of the time. So I check again in flow, expecting him to bet whether he has an ace or not. And he obliges with a bet of $30. We decide to smooth call again, keeping all of his bluffs that he may have in range. And depending on what the river is, we can possibly lead out. The river doesn't pair the board, but still not the best card. It's an offsuit 10. I say not the best card because a few things got there that are now beating us, like King Jack for a straight or Ace 10, Queen 10 for a higher two pair. So I check for a third time, preparing to call off any reasonable size bet, but it doesn't come to that because he checks back. We show our seven deuce and we win. He flipped over queen nine offsuit for a pair of queens on the flop. Looking back at the hand, a check raise on the flop probably would have worked, but the ace on the turn might have killed our action. But who knows? This was an older gentleman, so he could have folded to a check raise on the flop with his top pair, mediocre kicker. Other than that last hand, we don't get involved too much the first half hour until we pick up the jiggities in the hijack. There's an under the gun straddle to 10. The under the gun one makes the call. On to me, we're gonna bump it up, we make it 40. Folds around to the small blind and 40 doesn't really suit well with him. So he three bets, he makes it 125 to go. Folds around back to me. And the small blind has around $800 total in his stack. So I debate on ripping it all in, but we're in position and with jacks, I mean, there's really no right way to play it. So we just smooth call. If we were out of position, I'd be more inclined to get it all in. But since we're in position, we're really only gonna get called by better queens, kings, aces, if we're lucky ace king for a flip. So we're taking our jiggities in position to the streets where the flop comes king two, three with two spades. Not terrible, there's only one over and we have the jack of spades so we can go runner runner spades for a flush. He C bets, which I would expect him to do with all of his holdings. He makes it 160. A little over a half pot sized bet so we think about it for a little bit, and there's a few turn cards that could potentially help us, like any spades for flush draw, or obviously our jack for three of a kind. We have position on this guy, and don't really want to fold to one continuation bet with an over card to our pair. So we're here to gamble, we throw in the 160. The turn doesn't improve us, it's a six of hearts. Seeing what my opponent wants to do, and what he wants to do is check was definitely expecting him to continue the aggression and we were just gonna fold and move on to the next hand. But by him checking, it just seemed like the biggest white flag was waving in front of me. 
and I was like, all right, this is my chance. This is my opportunity. Let's take this down. I don't think I need to make it too big. There's around a pot size bet left to play for. So I come up with a sizing of around a third pot, $215. Just enough where I can get folds out of ace queen, ace jack, lower pocket pairs, and not so much where I can get away from if he happens to jam with say a slow played pocket kings for three of a kind. He glances back at his cards, shakes his head, and folds face up. What do you show? Two black I didn't show anything. <laughs> it's always a good feeling to get a better hand to fold in a bigger three bet pot. Yeah. This hand is a fun one. Not something I normally would do, but we get involved with a current vlog subscriber. Shout out to you, Steven, from Hawaii. One of my very first do it for the vlog moments. We have queen seven of clubs in the big blind. Folds around to the cutoff, Steven. He makes it 25. And normally I would just throw my cards away facing a 5x raise with this type of hand. But because it's him and we've already played a few hands together, just an overall cool guy, I make the call. So out of position, heads up. The flop is ace of diamonds, seven of spades, 10 of hearts. We have bottom pair, mediocre kicker, but we're out of position and the ace on the board favors him more than us. So we decided to check. Steven down bets to 20 and not really going anywhere because we got a little piece and we have a backdoor straight draw to fall back on. So we make the call. The turn is a five of spades. So it brings in the backdoor flush draw and doesn't improve us at all. So we check. He slows down and checks back. The river is a three of clubs. So still sitting with third pair and really just trying to get to showdown. So we check. Lucky for us, he checks back again. He said he has a seven. I say I do too. And he flips over the best seven, king seven offsuit. Right, I'm like, ah, oh, crap, so close. Glad the pot's going to a really good guy, but not to worry, we get back at him later on in the session. Not too long after, we get involved with Steven again. We have ace queen offsuit in early position. We make it 15. The cutoff makes the call, and Steven in the small blind makes the call as well. So, three ways to a flop. And it's 10, 6, 8, rainbow. Steven checks to me. And in between two opponents, I believe the correct move is to check. Taking a page out of Wolfgang's book, I believe. I think I saw on one of his recent vlogs saying something about monkey in the middle. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you're in between two opponents, that's what it's called, monkey in the middle. Action checks around. Onto a turn, still three ways. And it's the king of diamonds. A card that definitely hits our range that we can represent. Steven checks again, and we are going to represent the king, and we throw out 20. Surprisingly, the cutoff raises, but he only makes it 55. So a smaller raise, and when Steven makes the call for 55, we're getting an even better price to hit our gutter, and our ace can even be live as well. So we throw in 35 more onto a river, it pairs the board, it's another six. We don't improve and only sitting with ace high. Steven checks, I check, and the cutoff checks as well. The cutoff announces king, which already beats us, and Steven proudly flips over his hand. He has six three offsuit. He flopped bottom pair and river three of a kind. So nice hand, Steven. That was already our fourth or fifth hand we've lost against him. So easy to say he's had our number pretty much this whole session so far. For some context on this next hand, Steven just lost a really big pot, the hand right before. He said he had two pair and the river had three diamonds on the board. So he faced an all in and ended up folding. The other gentleman didn't show his hand, but we we're all pretty sure he had a flush, a really high flush. So short version, Steven could have been a little tilted on this one. We have pocket nines, a decent hand, so we open it up to 15. Folds around to the small blind, he makes the call. And Steven in the big blind also makes the call. So three ways in position. And the flop comes eight, three, four, rainbow. So we flop an over pair. They both check to me, and I make a continuation bet, as I would with majority of my holdings. 
but also for some protection because we don't want to see any over cards come out. We go about half pot, we make it 20. The small blind calls, and then Steven actually raises to 70. Not really too much going on on this board. I mean, he could have pocket threes, pocket fours for a set, but other than that, it's not really representing too much because I think any over pair that is beating us probably should have three bet pre-flop or maybe just trying to take control of the hand with five, six suited for open-ended and backdoor flush draw. Also have another player behind to consider, but I think if he had a really strong hand, he would have raised himself. I think folding is out of the question, so our only options are to smooth call and hopefully the small blind gets out of the way, or do we raise ourselves and hopefully we're not up against a set. We just decide to smooth call in the situation and the small blind thinks for a little bit, but facing a lot of action in front of him and gonna be out of position the entirety of the hand, he just folds his cards. So heads up to a turn, and it's an undercard to our pair, it's the two of clubs. Brings in the backdoor flush draw, and the most obvious straight got there with five six. Expecting him to bet again, cause that card doesn't hit us at all. I mean, ace five suited got there, but am I really calling a check raise with ace five suited with a player behind? Probably not. But he doesn't, and checks to us. And at this point, I think I can rule out sets, cause I think he'd be continuing with those holdings. So kind of like my bet on the flop, we're gonna bet again for protection. We make it 110. He doesn't think for too long and makes the call. So onto a river and it's a 10 of diamonds. Flush draws brick, but it is a card over our pair. He checks to us again and I think I'm ahead, but this is the guy that called a raise with fourth pair a few hands ago. So he could have a wide range of hands. Heck, I wouldn't even be surprised if he flipped over 10 deuce for the Doyle Brunson hand. So we take our hand to showdown. I announce just nines and he flips over his hand and he says, you got it. He had queen eight for top pair on the flop. So it really was just a filler raise with top pair seeing where he was at. The last hand we're gonna go over, we're in middle position and we look down at pocket aces. The under the gun one limps for five. We're gonna raise it up, we make it 20. Folds around to the button, he makes the call. The big blind makes the call, and the under the gun one limper also makes the call. Not the most ideal situation, going four ways to a flop with aces, but here we are. And it comes king seven six rainbow. It checks to us, we're gonna throw out a seabed, we make it 30. The button gets out of the way, and the big blind, none other than Steven, again, makes the call. And the under the gun one limper folds his cards. So heads up to a turn and it pairs the board. It's a seven of hearts. A really good card for us. It reduces the combination of sets that he may have. He checks to us and I don't think I'm gonna get three streets of value from much worse. So I decided to check back for pot control and it would just be ugly if he check raised with seven, eight, seven, nine, seven, ten, four, three of a kind. Onto a river, and it's the five of hearts. So backdoor flush draw does hit, but I can rule that out when he checks to us. And I wanna go for some value, but I don't know how much. There's around 140 in the middle, and my thought process was what amount would get called by a non-believing six or pocket threes, pocket fours, maybe even pocket eights. And I just decide to throw out the same bet that I did on the flop, $30. He calls pretty quickly. We flip over our aces, and he said he had a king with not so good of a kicker. So we take down the last pot of the night. Probably could have got a little bit more value knowing he had a king, but pretty good way to end the session. Yeah, you can't. Why can't you film while you're cashing out your chips? I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me. You're allowed to film in the poker room, but you're not allowed to film while you're cashing out your chips. Um, it just doesn't make sense. But first time at the Venetian, I mean, really big poker room. Can't complain about it. I mean, winning money is always a bonus. 
but not just that it was just a really fun table to be on really fun group of guys I mean when people know that you're vlogging they kind of just want to get more involved with you so that's actually a big part of why I'm doing this like I said before all the interaction in the comments but it's not just in the comments now it's actually in real life so it's kind of cool meeting these people like oh I'll support you and I'll watch and they want to see what you had against them so that's kind of fun too but the numbers will be somewhere on the screen uh, one a little or four hundred dollars so that was awesome uh, got in a few interesting hands and hope you guys enjoyed it if you did like subscribe comment help the algorithm and until next time who knows where we'll be still here for a couple more days so yeah let's get it remember i'm matty ice haha <laughs> <laughs> psych you thought we were gonna say peace out but nope i decided to put the next day's hands in this vlog as well so hope you guys enjoy we're at another new location for us we're at the encore Never been at this property, so let's see what it has to offer. First impressions of the poker room, I mean, it's a little bit smaller, but it's kind of cool to play at the same location where you see all these other vloggers playing some of the biggest games that you'll see. And anytime you're at a new place, new location, it's always fun, so hopefully it treats us well. Spoiler alert right away, it wasn't the nicest. It was around 3, 3.30 at this point, and we had dinner plans at 6, so only had a couple hours to play. So when our name gets called for the 1-3, we sit down right away, $500 max, and get started. Our last session, we ended off with pocket aces. It only seems right to start this session off with the same hand. Not even an orbit in, and we're in the big blind. There's a couple limps in the field. The hijack raises to 15, and the button, 3 bets, to 45. Getting the best starting hand in poker and already seeing all this action in front of me, it's kind of hard to contain myself. The hijack has around $1,000 in his stack and the button has around six, maybe 650 in his stack. So they both cover me. So absolutely dream spot, hoping for a cooler situation, aces versus kings kind of thing. So we throw out another raise and we make it 145 to go. The limpers get out of the way. The hijack gets a count and pretty quickly folds as well. But the button thinks about it for a little bit. I'm thinking, come on, call, jam all in, something, anything. But after about 10, 15 seconds, he folds as well. But still a really good start, taking down about $70 uncontested. About a half hour later, can't make this shit up, we get dealt the same hand, pocket aces. Same suit and everything, it's crazy. We're in the hijack this time, Folds around to me, I make it $10. The cutoff calls, and the big blind calls. So, three ways to a flop. And it comes 3-3-3. Three, three, three.
With those few hands and some others, we chip down a little bit. We have around 360 in our stack at this point. The small blind buys the button for four, folds around to middle position, he raises to 12, and we're in the hijack and we look down at pocket queens. A premium, so we're definitely gonna bump it up. We raise it to 35, it folds around back to middle position, and he four bets to 85. This guy covers us, and I contemplate five bet jamming, but we're really only gonna get snap called by aces or kings. So I just decide to smooth call and see a flop. We get a decent flop. It's 10, nine, seven with two hearts. We have an over pair, backdoor straight, backdoor flush draw. Being the four better, I expect him to bet, but he actually checks to us. So we throw out a super small bet. We make it 45, trying to keep all his ace king, ace queen, pocket Jackson. He thinks for a little bit and makes the call. The turn is another undercard. It's a three of diamonds. He checks again to us, and we only have about $210 left in our stack. So the stack to pot ratio is maybe one to one. Like I said on the flop, we want to charge his ace kings, and even pocket jack should probably pay off another bet. So we put half of it in, we make it 105, basically committing ourselves. He thinks about it for about 20 seconds, and he actually announces all in. Deep down, I'm like, damn, I know I'm beat, but maybe he has ace king of diamonds, two overs and nut flush draw, or like I said, pocket jacks, thinking that he's ahead, that I maybe have ace king. So with all the money I already committed, I basically just put it all in, and sure enough, he has pocket aces. So needing to hit our two outer, and here's the river. And we couldn't do it, we couldn't hit our two outer. So pretty much just a basic cooler, aces versus queens, and kind of an unfortunate run out, but that's poker, what are you gonna do? It was already around that time to go eat, so we don't buy back, and we just take this $500 loss and head to dinner. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the hands, and maybe learned a few things from either today's session or yesterday's session. That's it at the Encore, guys. In for five, out for zero, just, just a classic cooler. Not too much interesting happened. I mean, had aces twice, kings, and but, yeah, yeah, just slowly bled towards the end. But hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give it a like, give a comment, all that good stuff, subscribe. And uh, until next time, peace out.